Yo, what's going on YouTube? It's your boy Jan Moses back here with the stealth mode set that just appeared in the collection tab here in NBA 2K25, my team. Now, by the time this video goes out live, uh, we may be about 20 or so minutes away from content coming out. And I may be live on YouTube around that time. So if you're watching this video shortly after it's live on YouTube, there's a good chance that I am live myself on stream going through the agenda so I can show you guys what I believe is going to be the most efficient way to get them done um, to more than likely get four deluxe packs, either three or four deluxe packs um, to get a player from this 22 card collection. Now, just to give you guys a breakdown of the, the amount of cards per tier in this set, because I did write those down, we have the three pink diamonds and the five diamonds, which we saw in the graphic yesterday. I believe we saw all the diamonds um, but in case we did not, I'll just read them out to you. We have Michael Porter Jr., who I think is going to be the best of all the diamonds that we get today in this drop. Tyrese Maxey, Trey Young, Julius Randle, and DeMontis Sabonis. Um, if I had to pick one to use, I'd probably pick Julius Randle just because I know he's going to be one of the cheaper diamonds and I'm a Knicks fan. I'm going to miss having Julius Randle wearing uh, the blue and orange for my New York Knicks. Wishing him all the best in Minnesota. But with that said, moving on from the three pink diamonds and the five diamonds, we have another promo with only one Amethyst player in Albert King, who I'm really not all that interested in. I mean, if I get him, cool, but he just seems like, you know, a more old school player who, you know, his Hall of Fame badges are related to finishing around the rim and not shooting. Don't really know if I care too much about a 6'6 six, six, uh, shooting guard with finishing badges. So do with that what you will. Uh, we have two rubies, two sapphire cards, four emeralds, and five golds. Uh, really don't love that we're going to be more than likely getting agendas for deluxe packs. And we're going to end up having um, golds and emeralds um, be the cards that we're going to probably see most frequently because we have the largest number of um, cards in this set outside of diamonds being golds and emeralds. And you're not gonna pull a diamond out of your deluxe pack. I'm sorry. I wish I could say that you will, but you're not. It's not gonna happen. Um, let's go over a couple of the budget cards though, because I know plenty of people yesterday went through the hidden gems tab and they found uh, players um, in those hidden gems tab from the graphic. We're not gonna do that today. We're gonna look at some of the cards that I think for those of you guys that are playing salary cap or that are playing breakout and you want lower tier cards, for matchup purposes and breakout, or to uh, you know help you fit better players in your salary, uh, your salary cap teams. Uh, I think it's important to have these budget cards to help you succeed in both of those game modes. And let's start with my favorite of all the budget tier cards that are coming out today, um, and that is Channing Frye. And it's not just because he's wearing a New York Knicks uniform. Um, anytime you can get a Sapphire tier center who has a respectable shooting rate or shooting rating from three. Um, he's going to be worth a look and an 86 three-pointer on Channing Fry, who's a legitimate seven footer is nothing to sneeze at. 37 ball handle. I could not care less. If you're trying to get a center who's Sapphire tier that can shoot well and dribble, I don't know what to tell you. I really don't. Um, 60 speed is also not terrible for Channing Fry, at least in my opinion, again, for a Sapphire card, really not all that bad. 90 stamina also not all that bad. Uh, and then he has Gold Deadeye and Gold Set Shot Specialist. This card is going to be a really fun card to run, I think, in salary cap. And honestly, in the early stages of Showdown, maybe if you get lucky with the matchmaking, you could bring Channing Fry out there to run, you know, the five for you in case you like his jump shot. His jump shot is usually pretty good. I don't know what his jump shot is like this year, but Channing Fry could be a really fun budget card to run. Uh, let's move on to my second spot, and that's going to be Otto Porter, who is shooting guard eligible, which that alone honestly may make him my number one budget card um, because he's six foot eight and can play the shooting guard with an 86 three pointer. Uh, ball handle is a little low at 79 for those of you that care. 78 speed, also a little low, but I mean, I love that his jumper has, you know, his three point jump shot is at an 86, and then his badges. He also comes with Deadeye and Set Shot Specialist on gold, along with Slippery Off Ball, which is also pretty nice. And then some other respectable defensive badges that are silver. So, um, could be a pretty fun card, again, to throw into your salary cap and breakout lineups. 
Derek White, this may be a card that may only be reserved for breakout, but a six foot four budget point guard is going to be pretty solid defensively. If you look at his badges, gold challenger, pick dodger, and off ball menace, uh, all really nice badges to have on your point guard in breakout when he's, you know, six foot four. 79 three pointer. I mean, if you're looking for a point guard that you can, you know, step back and hit threes with, it may not be Derek White, but. You know, Derek White, at least in 2K24, had a jump shot that I really liked using. So if it's the same kind of situation with this Emerald Derek White, they may be a card that you're going to want to bring out there. Um, 38 steel is insane, even with this card just being an Emerald. 84 perimeter defense is also kind of insane, but it's somewhat understandable um, given that, again, he's only an Emerald. I think if you're looking for more defensive-minded center, or sorry, defensive-minded point guards that are low tier, I would look at cards from the Ironclad set guys like at least i think it was ironclad guys like um like mo cheeks is one of my favorite sapphire budget point guards to run offline because he has a 73 pointer which is greenable and he comes with hall of fame glove which is just insane um 83 speed is also not too crazy on this card but i think he'll be a pretty fun card to run i love the badges on him um should be pretty fun uh, kind of bummed we're not going to go over his, his card but gg jackson no badges at all i know it's just a gold card um, but still would have liked to have seen a little more on him. Uh, and then uh, last but not least, these two cards here, we have Psycho T, Tyler Hansborough. Um, he's going to be really good at snagging rebounds for you at the power forward position while also having a 73-pointer. Another card whose jump shot I feel like has usually been pretty easy to green in previous my teams. Um, 80 interior defense, also not bad. Love the rebounding being, you know, 88s, but the 42 speed, Really not great. This is not a card you're going to want to bring into salary cap. He's going to get cooked defensively. But for breakout, again, really fun card that you may want to run, you know, in offline mode. And then last one, mostly because of his name, Dan DeCow. It's going to be a really fun name to say. Um, but anytime you see a gold card that has four gold badges that are shooting related, and he has, what, an 86 three-pointer. Uh, we've seen a number of cards with an 86 three-pointer, I think, in this set. Um, looks like a pretty fun card with 83 speed. Honestly, not bad for a gold card. Um, this may be, again, a really fun card to bring into those breakout games when you need, you know, uh, you know, a lower tier lineup to match up with those easy, medium, and random hard tier lineups. And honestly, for break, for not, not for breakout, I'm sorry, for salary cap, if you're looking for those gold players to put at the end of your bench, if you're in one of those slugfests and you need to spot a couple of minutes, um, or you're like down in a game and your starting point guards exhausted, you could bring in Dan DeCal for a couple of minutes. And while he won't be anything good on defense, depending on his jump shot, if it's good, an 86 three pointer on a gold could be a lot of fun to use. Again, kind of bottom of the barrel stuff, but I figure we're at this point of my team where I have a good amount of MT, but I don't want to invest it into the top tier cards because I just don't see the return on investment being there. Why would I spend 250,000 MT? On this michael porter jr card for me to play online and get 1000 mt per game that makes no sense i'd have to play 250 games of showdown potentially to make my mt back uh on this michael porter jr investment it's just not there i would still rather spend my time that i am playing this game for right now playing offline until we see the rewards improve either in value or in quantity um ideally both um, in NBA 2K25, my team. And so until then, I'll be sticking to the offline streets even when I'm on stream and uh, looking to buy some of these budget cards. Also, Doc Rivers didn't even look at this card. Didn't even notice that he's wearing a Knicks jersey. Um, but I don't know if he's going to be all that fun to use. 73 pointer, uh, 77 speed. Yeah, this card's going to be a pass. I'd rather have Dan DeCow on my team. Oh, sorry. Last guy, Jose Alvarado. I actually did look at his card earlier. Look at these badges, man. Four gold badges, all defensive. This may be the card you want to run in breakout with an 81 three-pointer. And, I mean, 76 speed is not great, but if you're looking for, you know, a fun defensive point guard, like, for me, I don't really look to score that much with my point guard in breakout. If I do, I have my guy, Sapphire Bimbo Coles, and when that card drops in a promo, I'll be promoting him like crazy. Uh, but Jose Alvarado may be another fun low-tier card to bring out there for matchmaking purposes again for breakout. So, yeah. Uh, let me know down below in the comments. Do you guys like this kind of content where I go over the budget tier cards? Let me know. Curious to hear your thoughts. Appreciate you all. Again, I should be live on YouTube by the time this video goes live, hopefully. Um, maybe it'll go live even sooner. I'm going to try to go live around 10.50 a.m. Eastern Time. And right now it is 10.43. So this video will definitely be live when I'm live on YouTube more than likely. 
Appreciate you guys. Until next time, I'll see you later.